Hey folks, I'm Greg. Just a normal hunter, an outdoorsman like you folks. My son got me back into bow hunting and uh, 3D shoots after a 25 year layoff. Things sure have changed a lot in 25 years. I'm still shooting a PSE, same brand I started with a long time ago, but this vision is a lot more advanced than the bow I used to shoot. Same with optics. They've come a long way in 25 years too. We all know the importance of good optics in the field. These are the old Bushnells I used to hunt and shoot with. I bet these things are 30 years old by now. They're 7 by 30, nice and compact. They still work. The optics are a little cloudy after all these years. And even though my eyes are still 20 20, 2015 on a good day, it never hurts to have 10 times the magnification and a wider field of vision. And a wider field of vision sure ups the performance in low light conditions. That's a big edge in the field and on the range. This is my old bow hunting rangefinder. Simple enough. I think this thing cost me about 10 bucks. <laughs> I mean dollars. I only ever missed one deer using it and that was a doe. It works on the principle of the average height of a deer at the shoulder versus the range. If you take a look through here, I'm standing at about 30 yards. And as you can see, as I move it from the 50 down to 30, how the range of marks match when I hit 30 yards. Hard to get a good shot through the camera, but you get the idea. It was good enough back in the day when you couldn't even get a, a laser rangefinder. We got better stuff now, better technology. Bottom line, as a hunter, I needed new stuff. So a few weeks back, I wandered into uh, Dick's Sporting Goods in Florence, Kentucky to check out some rangefinders. I looked at a Leopold and a couple of Nikons, but I really didn't find anything that caught my fancy. They did have a nice selection of binoculars, so I thought, well, I'll check those out while I'm here. <laughs> I need, you saw the Bushnells, I need a new pair. They had uh, several pair of Nikons, some Zeiss, and uh, a pair of Vortex. Now, he showed me the Nikons first, and I checked out those things. Man, the optics in that Nikon rocks. I've got two Nikon cameras, and I got my son a uh, Nikon Pro Staff 4 to 12 by 40 BDC scope. Uh, I think it was last Christmas for his 30 out 6. That thing rocks. So Nikon is, man, the optics on those things are great. But, you know, the price, it was, eh. The clerk showed me a pair of Vortex Diamondbacks. These things right here. I'll tell you what, that right there, that is the bomb, baby. I looked at them and the optics in these things right up there with the Nikons. Every bit is good. And probably about the same price. Take a look through them. These things are built like a tank. Argon gas purged, multi-coated lenses, fog proof, waterproof. Man, these things are sturdy. They got 10 times magnification, a 42 millimeter field of view, 16 millimeter eye relief, close in focus to five feet. And you can see in this side-by-side -side shot here that they're far superior to my old Bushnells. But then the clerk told me about Vortex's VIP unconditional lifetime warranty. He says, you know, you drop these things off a tree stand and break them, or, you know, you drop on a rock, or you step on them, whatever, get a cut, whatever happens to them, they're covered. Now, I did find out from the warranty that that does not cover loss or theft. But I'm sitting in Kentucky, Kentucky's got 3% sales tax. Tennessee's 9.25% sales tax. For $229, I figured, man, that's a no-brainer. So I go up to check out. A little girl asked me, she said, would you, sir, would you like to get the extended warranty with us? I'm like, I don't think so, honey. That comes from the factory. So I walked out of there with a brand new pair of Vortexes. Little did I know that less than a week later, I was going to need that warranty because this is what they looked like. They looked a little rougher laying on the road and took a few minutes to gather up all the pieces that I could find. I lost them in a the fall, they fell, and then they were run over, probably several times before I could retrieve them. Man, I was sick. So I went to Vortex's website, filled out the service form, boxed the things up, sent them in hoping for the best. You know what? Less than two days later, I had a brand new pair back in my hands. They even overnighted the new pair back to me. And I'll tell you what, that right there is service. So, that brings me to the rangefinder question. Now, I'm the kind of guy that researches the hell out of something before I spend my hard-earned money on it. 
I looked at specs on literally dozens of rangefinders. Plus, they, I used like three or four different ones, maybe five, at the range this year doing doing 3D shoots. And I watched, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 videos on YouTube on rangefinder reviews. You know what? Almost none of them gave me any information that I couldn't find reading the damn box. Partly why I decided to make this review. I narrowed my choices down to the Nikon Arrow ID5000, the Nikon Archer Max HD, the Nikon Pro Staff 7i, the Vortex Ranger 1000, and the Leopold RX1200i TBR. Bushnell was never really in the running. I've used a lot of Bushnells on the range, and I find that their optics are kind of eh. And you saw the optics through my 30-year-old binoculars, so they weren't so great after a little bit of age either. Since rangefinders for us are primarily for bow hunting and gun hunting out to 600 yards, I didn't need the most expensive or the farthest ranging rangefinder out there on the market. If we wanted a rangefinder that has angular compensation, that's a big, that's a big plus in bow hunting, and all of those rangefinders I just mentioned have that. I was tempted to go with one of the Nikons. Nikons got fantastic optics and they're a little less expensive. But I've heard from people that Nikons in a little bit of fog have really poor performance. I won't give you a readout. And I just don't like an LCD rectangle and the display. You put that thing in a shadow or if you're in low light, you can't see it. And that sucks. I also figured I don't want to regret my purchase. I don't want to be getting another rangefinder a year down the road. So why not spend a little bit more money, get the LED rectangle that I wanted, something you can see in the shadows, and get the damn rangefinder that I need right from the get-go. So given my experience with the VIP Unconditional Lifetime Warranty for Vortex, the Vortex Ranger 1000 won out for me. It's a nice compact size, rugged construction. It's got six time magnification, 22 millimeter field of view, and, seven, and 17 millimeter of eye relief. It's easy, to see. it's easy to see through, even with glasses, and simple one-hand operation. Got two buttons, it's got the power button and a menu button. So power it on, just hit the power button, and it's up and ready to go. You press the power button again to range. Ranging is nice and quick, much quicker than some of the other brands I checked out. And as you can see, the Vortex Ranger 1000 has an awesome LED rectangle with three intensity settings for varying light conditions. It's currently in the medium intensity, and it's about 30 minutes before sunset in this shot. Don't judge the LED from this video. It's hard to get a good camera shot through the viewfinder. Trust me, it's nice and clear and a good red-orange color. The color balance on the camera has a hard time mimicking the human eye, so it looks a little funky here. This is all three intensities at sunset lighting on a clear evening. HCD, or horizontal component distance, is the factory default and what I currently have set. This is your shoot slot distance, which most all bow hunters will use. For rifles, the HCD on the Vortex is accurate out to 800 yards as long as the slope is 15 degrees up or down or less, and accurate out to 400 yards if the slope is 15 to 30 degrees. Mode changes are accomplished by first powering up the rangefinder with power button. Then without the crosshair showing, press and hold the menu button for at least four seconds. The unit will display HCD or LOS, whichever mode it's currently set in, and then you can scroll through the settings with the menu button and change them with the power button. You can change the display from yards to meters, change the display intensity, and change from HCD to LOS or line of sight mode. Line of sight mode gives you the straight line distance to your target with no angular compensation. Also, in LOS mode, the Ranger 1000 gives you an INC or incline percentage correction based on the angle cosine. It displays COS at the bottom in LOS mode until you range to remind your dumbass that the bottom number it spits out is an incline percentage, not an actual angle. So, for all you eggheads and sniper types out there, you can take all that data, plug it into your ballistics calculator, let her rip. Or you can visit Vortex's website and generate your own specific slope correction drop data using Vortex's long-range ballistics calculator. Now if you're not that fancy, 
You can also take the COS incline percentage from the Ranger 1000 and reference it to the slope angle incline correction field reference card with MOA on one side and mill rads on the other side to figure out your holdover or your adjustment. Me, I'm an old school Marine. I mean really old school. Our issue weapons are M16A1s, Colt 1911s. We wore highly starched OD green utility covers. We killed shit out to 500 yards with iron sights. I've never used a scope. Maybe one day if I go out west. Or if I need to take a remedial math class and uh, elevate my mathematical skills, all that'll come in handy. But it sure is a nice feature. Ranger 1000 also has a scan mode. You got the power button down for the second time ranging. Just continue to hold the power button and scan your targets and it'll give you a continuous readout to the distance. Closest this thing will range is 11 yards, and that's what they post, publish on their website is 11 yards. I've tried getting closer, but that seems to be a hard number. And I also read in the user's manual that the laser on this thing has a vertical divergence on the beam. You know, I could see some applications where that might be handy, but you probably have to take a look at the geek speak in the uh, links on the video here or in the description if you really want to get technical about all that beam divergence and all that crap. A couple other nice features about the Ranger 1000 is the tripod mount. When you get out there ranging six, seven, eight hundred yards, that tripod mount, that thing is as handy as pockets on a pair of pants, but you can't hold it steady enough to get a good range. It's got a belt clip, which is detachable. It's got three Allen screws on it, and it also comes with a uh, lanyard if you want to wear it around your neck and really looks like a geek. Let's talk about what I don't like about this rangefinder. I don't like that it only ranges in complete yards. No tents. That may seem like a small feature, but in bow hunting, not knowing where that break point is, that gets really frustrating. I also don't like that when you range something, the display, the displayed range doesn't stay up there, but I don't know, one or two seconds, it needs to stay up longer. I don't like how it doesn't have the first and distant target priority like the Nikons do, but you know, to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever missed that. Not yet anyway, but it is a nice feature. And I don't like the focus on the viewfinder. The adjustment on it's a little stiff, but it is getting better the more I use the rangefinder. I've also used it alongside the Leopold RX1200i TBR at known distances on 3D shoots. And the Vortex always reads one yard shorter than the actual distance and what the Leopold reads. That's not a big feature if you're aware of it, because that's where you're going to set your bow up. But really, you know, that kind of seems like a quality issue to me. And that one yard distance, I've ranged out with both of them side by side. I've ranged out to 787 yards, and that seems to hold true all the way out, regardless of the distance. Now, Vortex does say that this will range out to 500 yards on a soft target or a deer, and out to 1,000 yards on a hard or reflective target. The farthest I've ranged with it so far is 200 yards on a soft target, and I have ranged out to 978 yards on a hard target. Although on a long range target like that, the readout did take a while to get out there and get back to me. I think that was due to the uh, shakiness of it. It would be better if I'd have had a tripod. Another area that I found the Leopold was better was when you're ranging through foliage. Tried a little hole in, uh, in the leaves, and the Leopold bang right through it, gave me a good reading. This thing, it took a while. I had to kind of play around and shoot some other things to get the range. But we were out hunting the other day and I used them side by side again. And this one ranged through a hole better than the Leopold. So I'm not really sure which one is better in that aspect. A Vortex gives the accuracy of this as three yards, plus or minus three yards all the way out to the thousand. They don't give any changes for, you know, closer in or tighter tolerances like some of the other rangefinders do. Overall, the Vortex Ranger 1000 is a great rangefinder for the price point. MSRP on it's $499, but I haven't seen anybody selling it for that much money. Most places I've seen, you can get it for $379 all day long. I shopped mine around pretty well, and I found it for $334 on Amazon through a seller, I think it was uh, Target World Outdoors. So if you shop it, you can get quite a bit better deal. And when you consider that Vortex has the VIP lifetime unconditional warranty, it's a pretty good bargain. Now, 
let's talk about this puppy, the Leopold RX-1200i TBR. My son insisted on his rangefinder having an LED rectangle and being able to display in tents. Out of all the rangefinders we reviewed, this one was the only one that fit the criteria. Nikon's 7, uh, Pro Staff 7 had an LED rectangle or an LED display that operated in low light conditions, but the 7 was superseded by the 7i, and the 7i doesn't have LED. Why they took it out, I have no idea, but it must not have worked very well, or they would have left it in. Like the Vortex, this is nice and compact, it's rugged, they've got the power button up here on the top, and they've moved the menu button over here to the side. I like that because it's much, much less likely to get activated by accident, but it's still nice and handy to access when you want to change modes. It has 6x magnification, 22mm field of view, but only 14mm of eye relief on the viewfinder. The viewfinder on this one works a little bit better, it's nice and smooth. I don't think that's a big deal, I like the 17 better on the Vortex, but it's what you get with this one. The TBR stands for True Ballistics Range, and to get the most out of it, there's a little bit of work to programming everything in there, especially in the rifle modes. But let's take a look at it here. Like the Vortex, hit the power button to turn on, then again to range. The LED display has three intensities. And you can select between three different rectical display types. In bow mode, the 1200i gives you a shoots like distance, but only out to 125 yards. Then it reverts to a line of sight mode. It also displays the actual incline or decline angle along the bottom in bow or TBR mode. If you're using it for a rifle, then you'd select one of the other TBR modes, such as BAS for ballistics, hold for holdover, mill for mill radian, or MOA for minute of angle. Each of those modes requires inputting some information, including ballistics in the setup, but then the rangefinder will give you the appropriate adjustment. In essence, it can take the place of your ballistics calculator for most common calibers and loads. They even include a table for those in the user's manual. The rifle TBR modes are spec'd out to be accurate out to 800 yards. And speaking of accuracy, Leopold says that it's accurate to plus or minus a half a yard out to 125 and plus or minus three yards out to the full range of 1200 yards. It'll range a soft target or a deer out to 800 yards, an inanimate object out to 900, and a reflective target out to the full 1200 yards. The 1200i has last target mode, either on or off. That works just like the Nikon's. It gives the distance to the farthest object when more than one object may be read. There's also a trig function, which is handy for farmers, ranchers, foresters, or anyone needing a vertical measurement. It uses the sine and cosine of a line of sight range to calculate height. Like if we wanted to know the height of that pine tree back there, it's about 50 yards. We range the highest point and it gives us a line of sight distance of 54.7 along the bottom. Then the upper display briefly shows 52, which is the true horizontal distance, then a pause and it gives us the actual height of 18 yards. You have to do the math yourself to convert that to feet. And since I never had any of that common core crap, my math tells me that tree is 54 feet tall. It's pretty cool. I also discovered that if you're above the base of what you're checking, then you need to check the base and check the top and then add those two together because it's only checking from your current level. Leopold talks about DNA. In fact, they use that term in the description of all their rangefinders. It stands for Digitally Enhanced Accuracy. They also say that they incorporate advanced digital electronics using state-of-the-art ballistics algorithms. <laughs> I think that's just a fancy way of saying that we have better firmware and processors than our competition. But what it does for us is it gives us a more accurate measurement faster. I think they may also use higher power and higher quality lasers. I don't have any evidence of that because it seems like none of the manufacturers want to give any information about their lasers. I guess that's all top secret national security stuff. Maybe if I get a decoder ring, I can get it. Let's see, what well, haven't I covered? Oh yeah, it'll range down to four yards. Well, the user manual says five, and the website says six. 
but we've always been able to get it go down to four, no problem. So we'll go with that. It does have a scan feature, and the display stays up a lot longer than the Vortex, a full five seconds. I also like the closure on the case a lot better than the Vortex. Got this handy dandy little elastic hook dealio, easy for one hand operation. They also include a quick reference field card in case you forget how to operate any of the features in the field. Price, MSRP is $524 for one like this in the Mossy Oak Infinity Camo and $499 for a black one. I've seen the black ones all over the place for $389 to $419. And I paid $379 for this one at Bow Hunters Pro Shop in Maryville, Tennessee. And I've seen the black ones on Amazon as cheap as $349. Now, what don't I like about this rangefinder? Nothing. Seriously. I mean, if I had to fault anything about it, it'd be the lack of a tripod mount. So, which one? Man, they're both great rangefinders. Vortex's advantage is the VIP lifetime unconditional warranty. That's just unheard of these days. And it sure saved my ass on the binoculars. Outside of that, hands down, I go with Leopold RX1200i TBR. It's just a much better rangefinder. And it has a two year limited warranty. You know, and if you shop the price, they're less than $10 difference if you look around. One other thing I checked, I left out in the side by side comparison, the Leopold, was always faster, much faster, than the Vortex in ranging speed. Just blew it away. Now, the only thing I have to figure out is how to con my son into trading his Leopold for my Vortex. Hope y'all found the review a lot more helpful than the ones I found when I was shopping for optics. If you did, leave a comment, feel free to share the video. If you think I left anything important out, put that in the comments too. Keep checking back, you never know. If the mood strikes me, I might decide to review something else. Y'all have a good one.